Welcome everybody to the American Space Museum. I'm Mark Marquette. We're so glad you're with us to stay curious. Sorry we're a little late today, but we've been trying some new tricks and to improve our broadcast as well as make it stream better on all of our platforms, including Facebook Live, YouTube, Twitch, and Spotify. And we'll be moving some of this over onto Google and Apple Audio Podcasts. So thank you for joining us. Marty Winkles, my cameraman behind the scenes there, Trekkie Techie Jessica, uh, is uh, in his ear on the phone as we were trying to do something to make uh, one of our technical problems go away. And uh, thank you, Jessica, for all you do. I'm a little bit under the weather. I caught a little cold at the Astronaut Memorial on Saturday, but uh, going to weather through this here today with a little bit of frog in my throat. And we've got a program today that we didn't set up the pictures right where I want them, Marty, I'm sure. So when I push that, this is not, uh, we're going to go back this way real quick. Okay. Nope. Nope, no, don't do that. No, no, no. I'm looking for, uh, okay. I guess that's the first one. Yeah. There we go. Okay. I thought I had a groundhog up there, and I forgot about my little groundhog up there. After all, it's the Groundhog's Day today, two, tw two February 2nd, 2020, 2222. Two, two, two. If you like numerology, that's a lot of fun uh, to get through today, 2222, two, two, two. see what happens to us all today. And uh, Equinox, so uh, uh, whatever he saw, uh, it, we go by the science of of uh, the equinox in six months. Anyway, fun to have the groundhog part of today. Uh, this is also a new month of space shuttles. 11 of them were launched in the month of February. And we'll kick off those missions tomorrow with, uh, on Thursday, February 3rd, when three shuttles were launched on February 3rd in space history. And there's some interesting history involved with those shuttles. So be sure and stay tuned for that tomorrow. And next week, on Tuesday, February 8th, we will begin having the voice of Mission Control, Hugh Harris, on every month at the beginning of the month to talk about the shuttle missions of that month. So uh, we thank you, Hugh Harris, for helping you stay curious. And we hope that you enjoy featuring the shuttles throughout the month. Uh, it's an important legacy of our space program, of course. This was a busy weekend with Astronaut Memorial uh, at Sandpoint Park Saturday, which I was a privilege to be with uh, uh, the uh, Master of Ceremonies involved in that with Al Terrio and, of the, of, uh, and the city of Titusville and our museum put that on. And we're going to talk about that Friday some with Triple T when we have Tales from the White Room. But also Saturday was the 50th anniversary of the Grumman workers reunion for the Apollo 13 uh, mission 52 years later almost okay so uh, today we're going to highlight that Grumman reunion a little bit Marty Winkle my co-producer and cameraman now we're almost hitting 490 episodes he was the head of the committee that for three years have tried to put on this Grumman reunion because of the pandemic and they finally had it last Saturday and uh, it was really a wonderful event. We're going to show you some of the pictures there of, of six astronauts in attendance. And uh, I have Marty even comment about a few things here in a minute. But first, a little space news. And the first space news we have today is uh, 1959 on February 2nd. June 05 became Saturn V. A minor change in space history became huge in our minds when it happened on February 2nd, 1959, when it was recommended the Army proposed to name the Large Cluster Engine Booster to change the name from Juno 5 to Saturn, since Saturn was the next planet after Juno. That would also separate it from the Juno 1 four-stage booster that launched America's first satellite, Explorer 1. And then Juno 2 was a bigger concept derived from Jupiter medium-range ballistic missiles. So here are behind me the 13 successful launches of all of the Saturn V rockets. Never had a failure from Apollo 4 through Skylab, all 13 of them. Though there were some anomalies there on 4 and 6. Uh, 
they all were successful missions, and of course the brainchild of rocket genius Warner Von Braun. Uh, so this, this super heavy rated vehicle, still the largest vehicle launched, soon to be surpassed by the Artemis uh, Space Launch Systems rocket that we are gearing up for it going out to the pad here, hopefully in a couple weeks. We understand up to 10,000 of you out there are looking forward to coming to our space coast and, and seeing the uh, space launch system rocket go out to pad 39B and we will obviously be bringing you photos and coverage of that. So that's our space history today. 1959 Juno became Saturn V and there's all the, the rocket launches of them. Well, let's talk a little bit about this Grumman 13, Apollo 13. The Grumman were the astronaut, were the astronauts, were the space workers who built the lunar module. And Marty was an electrical engineer and uh, worked uh, inside the command, the ascent stage of the lunar module seen behind there. So I walk into the great hall of the Radisson where they're having this event. Nobody's in there except for Marty and Fred Hayes talking to each other. And I picked up my camera and snapped off a couple pictures and started talking to Fredo. And uh, everybody knows he's just a wonderful, wonderful man. Such a privilege to be around him and such a privilege to represent the museum and interact with uh, astronauts and, and also the VIPs of the era uh, management-wise. It's quite an honor, and I, I don't shirk that responsibility at all. Yeah, Marty. That's a quarter-scale model of the lunar module at North of Grumman built for the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11. Okay, that's a quarter scale model. If you can't hear, pick up Marty there. One fourth scale that they built for the Apollo 11, the 11 uh, anniversary. Now the Grumman uh, people ha here on the Space Coast numbered almost 1,500. Very a tight lit knit group, uh, probably like none other of all the space agencies. And throughout the decades, they have met at the seminal anniversaries of their wonderful machine with its six and then the landings and the seventh uh, uh, aborted landing. And it also, they also celebrate Apollo 9 and Apollo 10. Apollo 9 was completely Earth orbit. So 1971 was the Apollo 13 problem. And uh, here they finally got to celebrate it uh, in 2020. No, it's 1970, I'm sorry. Two years later, almost. Marty did a fabulous job. He gave the keynote speech to the uh, the group there. We're going to show you another picture here. There's Fredo shaking hands with Jonathan Ward. Jonathan Ward, of course, a wonderful friend of the museum, was there. Uh, had written a book uh, on bringing Columbia home with Mike Lineback. And then another book, his latest book, is uh, Breaking the Glass Ceiling uh then reaching the stars with Eileen Collins. We'll see a picture of Eileen there in a minute. Mark Usiak was one of the photographers there. Thank you, Mark, for sharing a few of these pictures. And I wanted to share more, but I haven't asked Trekkie Techie how to strip down my pictures so we can uh, show more of them because they were too high resolution. And I will figure that out so we can show more pictures because I had a few more to show than we're going to see today. But Fred Hayes, uh, age 84, I think. I meant to look that up, uh, uh, looking pretty good, and I hope nobody got the, the throat cold I did. And there's Marty and myself on the right, and Eileen Collins uh, saying to him, not another autograph. <laughs> no, Marty's got a, uh, what's the book you have there, a shuttle book, Marty? Yes, yeah, the first 100 missions. First 100 missions of the shuttle, and how many uh, shuttle astronauts have signed that for you now? About 50. About 50, all right. And uh, she's obviously a wonderful person, great delight, and uh, talked to her uh, over several days that she was here on the Space Coast, and she definitely wants to be involved with the American Space Museum. Of course, Eileen Collins, the first woman pilot, she did that twice, and then the first woman commander of a, of a space shuttle, and she did that twice. And you would think that she sold Avon all of her life, right, Marty, when you meet her? I mean, really, not, that's not an insulting to Avon people either. It's like she'd be driving a pink Cadillac for sure <laughs> to selling that stuff. But just a down-to-earth lady, and, and, and this is the, one of the joys of living on the Space Coast is you never know when you're going to run into an astronaut. And there's Troy Galloway with Trekkie Techie 
Jessica there enjoying and Bart uh, uh, and his wife uh, are beside him. Bart Martindale's head's tipped down there. Bart. Uh, That's tricky. There's there's Trekkie Techie taking a picture of me and her husband Troy. This is the beautiful setup there at the Radisson Inn. Three hundred and fifty sat down for a dinner. There's Bart there. He we just saw him a couple about an hour ago, and uh, but they had a beautiful table decorations. Of course, good food, and all three astronauts there. Jack Lausma was featured. Charlie Duke and Fred Hayes all gave a little panel discussion. Mm. And here's Eileen talking to uh, Charlie Duke on the left and Fred Hayes on the right. And that's Bruce Melnick on the far right. This is where we were getting together all the astronauts to stand up together and pose. And uh, she's who's she blocking out? She's blocking out Lausma there behind her. We'll see a picture of Jack here in a minute, I think. But that's Bruce um, Melnick. Yeah, Bruce Melnick we can see. But I see the NASA blue behind Eileen, and I think that's Jack Lausma. Yeah. Uh, so we'll say here a second, Marty and I were talking about different things that we heard these astronauts say that we never heard him say before. So Fredo, up on the, the panel discussion, said, I'd never heard this before, that Jack Swigert, the command module pilot, the first time he was ever in the lunar module was when they were a third of the way to the moon and the disaster happened and he had to crawl in there as he powered after he powered down the command module and he went through the the little uh tunnel to go into the lunar module and that was the first time he'd ever been inside of it and marty tells me that's not unusual that that probably none of the command module pilots were inside the lunar module um it wasn't part of their job but still out of curiosity and maybe when you think of a lifeboat scenario, you would have maybe had him go in there. But what uh, Fredo say that there's plenty of room, and they put Jack on top of the ascent stage uh, uh, hump in Indeed. the middle there, where you sat many an hour waiting for uh, your your work to be uh, checked out. Isn't that interesting? You sat uh, Jack Schweigert sat right where Marty sat on on limb seven was the uh, uh, Odyssey lunar module right marty yep and he's writing down a couple notes there some of you watching there uh here is the big lineup of the uh, uh all, all of our astronauts there to the left is rick mastrachio he is a shuttle astronaut and a northrop grumman executive now he gave a nice little talk there's charlie duke and of course fred hayes in the middle there charlie duke is the uh second youngest of the moonwalkers he's 85 or 86 and harrison schmidt's 85 uh they're both that same age and there is uh, eileen of course and the one uh, the rose among thorns they were saying of course and jack lausma there and what a wonderful character interesting man jack lausma is just a still a, a very uh rigorous healthy man and that is bruce melnick on the right and bruce melnick is the uh, coordinator uh, at the Kennedy Visitors Complex for all the astronauts. He's the resident astronaut. And it was interesting talking to Bruce about how he got all those astronauts to come out there and talk to you when you visit Kennedy Visitors Complex. On a, uh, a uh, Throughout the day, they have different uh, times where an astronaut appears there. So we'll be seeing more of Bruce Melnick. And uh, as, as all these astronauts, so friendly to try to help our, our nonprofit. Yes. I really think Charlie was the youngest to walk on the moon. Okay. I think Charlie is the youngest to walk on the moon. He was the youngest to walk on the moon. That's right. Uh, so he is, is the, the youngest of four left, only Buzz Aldrin, 92, and uh, David Scott, 88. There you see Charlie Duke. And um, uh, just a really nice guy. I'll have another comment about him. Marty, your comment, you talked to Charlie Duke. If we could hear you you speak about that. What'd you talk to Charlie Duke about at the at the uh, Friday night uh, reception? Well, I asked him if uh, he was a Capcom on Apollo Eleven. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and uh, he stammered over the word tranquility base. He said tra tranquility uh, in response to uh, Neil Armstrong's tranquility base here. And then the video you see him wiping his brow. Next to Charlie was uh, Jim Lovell and Fred Hayes, who were the backup crew on uh, on Apollo 11. And I asked him which 
So was he more nervous on Apollo 11 landing or on Apollo 16 when he actually touched down on the moon? And just to paraphrase what he said, he was a lot more nervous on Apollo 11 because all they had was a little bit of audio and Buzz really wasn't saying much except, you know, uh, four left, down six, you no know, words like that. Uh, very, very engineering, scientific minded individual. Where Charlie on Apollo 16, he can see where he's going. He's looking at the instrumentation. He has people talking to them, actually the Capcom on Apollo 16 talking to him. So he was a whole lot less stressed. He knew where he was. He knew what he was doing. So Apollo, Apollo 11 Capcom was a lot more stressful. Yes, very interesting. Thanks. Thanks, Marty. That was interesting to hear him comment about that. Jack Lausima over there um, was the uh, backup for Apollo 13, and he was segued into a, 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 a lunar landing eventually. Uh, when then they messed him up, but he probably would have been commander of Apollo 20, the last one, which was going to go to the Copernicus yeah, crater. Uh, Fred was in line uh, being he might have been commander. Pardon me? Not as a command. Yeah, Lawson would have been a commander. He would have been a pilot, probably, lunar pilot. Uh, but Fred Hayes was going to be commander of Apollo 18 after this mission, as he was a backup to the commander of Apollo 15 after the 13 mission. And that would have gone to Schroeder's Valley, a very interesting sinuous rill of lava uh, 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 close that you see right around full moon. And somebody asked him about that. And, and he, uh, uh, you know, he could have possibly have been, and he, he really doesn't bemoan that, you know, when Apollo 13 happened, he knew, he knew right away the first thing that went through his head was, uh-oh, I don't get to walk on the moon. And that was very disappointing to him after all that training. Uh, but he hoped to go back and, uh, uh, you know, uh, but if he, would have, if he would have landed on 13, he possibly could have been, the commander of 18 and walked twice on the moon. So uh, Bruce Melnick over there is the first Coast Guard uh, astronaut. And he was on STS-49, the maiden voyage of uh, Endeavor. And that was the one where he was uh, uh, inside with um, Kathy uh, 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 Thornton, Kathy Thornton, her maiden flight. They were inside watching three astronauts grab a, the only time they did that, three men spacewalking on that. And uh, Bruce Melnick said he'd, he'd love to help you stay curious sometimes. So, well, we got another picture there to show. Oh, yes, here we go. I'm about to grab <laughs> Charlie Duke. Uh, I'm talking to him. Behind me is our, uh, our auction and chief operating officer now. Uh, Chuck Jeffrey, and Lausum is right behind Charlie Duke, and uh, thank you, Mark Usiak, for taking this picture at um, Zarella's. We had a, 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 a nice little dinner at Zarella's Friday night, and uh, that is Charlie Duke's wife there, and just, just, uh, uh, pardon me? Dottie. Dottie, Dottie, and Dottie's well known, and uh, just uh, all of you men out there, learn a lesson. I watched how he, he uh, was so attentive to his wife, Dottie, yet uh, Charlie Duke was, yet everybody wanted to talk to him and so forth like me there. But uh, there I'm just telling him that, hey, Charlie Mars, our godfather and wonderful leader of this museum for over 20 years, says hi to you. And, and he said, of course, he knew, knows Charlie very well. And he said, tell Charlie Mars I love him. And I did. So, well... Oh, I'm sorry that I didn't have more pictures to share. I'll kind of try to solve that problem there. But we um, had a wonderful time. Uh, here, here's the brochure of it there. Uh, Marty, it was a really a great uh, event. Nerve-wracking for him. We want to say hi to Tom Usiak. Thank you, Tom. Uh, he, we sent uh, your brother Mark home with a little bit of swag for you, and thank you for your comments on that. Christopher Mick is watching in Wisconsin. Chrissy, Chrissy Land, thank you for watching, Chrissy. Uh, Howard Pepper, Umberto, Villado Lopez is watching, and we've got uh, Aaron Lewis from the Air Zoo in Michigan, and uh, we're going to have Aaron on Stay Curious uh, uh, when she comes into town. Here and this is a, this is a neat little um, 
Museum, Air Zoo it's called, up in Michigan. We got a lot of Michigan people watching us here. Dean Dean Babcock says it snowed in, uh, where's Dean? Dean's in. No, no, say Gene Wright just said hello. And hello, Gene Wright. And we shared some of Gene Wright's photos of the astronaut memorial. Thank you, Gene. Marty and I just been exhausted, and I do most of the administration on Facebook, and I'm sorry to get behind on that, but I'm telling you, whew, the weekend really wiped us out and helps you to show your age, too. I'm not recovered yet. Because I ain't recovered, and I caught a little little throat cold from the wind out there. So, uh, But we want to let everyone to know that we had a great time uh, and, and um, just so so wonderful representing the museum. Uh, and... All of these astronauts that give their time, just not on the Space Coast. You have an opportunity to see an astronaut. We hope that you can go out and enjoy uh, hearing them talk. Uh, Don't miss it. It, it, After all, 580 humans have orbited the Earth. Only 580 humans in the history of the world have orbited the Earth. And uh, we saw six of them in one place at at, uh, this wonderful Grumman reunion event. And we're going to be... For you Grummies out there watching, we're going to put the photos together and put them on a photo gallery, and we'll announce that on our Facebook page as well as the Grumman page. Yeah, Marty? If anybody's in the Biloxi, Mississippi area on Super Bowl Sunday, there's going to be a a dedication of a statue of Fred Hayes. Fred Hayes will be there. Uh, It'll be at 1 o'clock. I don't know where exactly in Biloxi, but uh, we have a few of our committee members planning on going there. So if you're in the area, you may want to stop by. Road trip to Biloxi on Super Bowl Sunday to see a statue of Fred Hayes being dedicated there. And and Marty, it's a road trip. We're going to be there and uh, uh, surprise him. Like Marty said, he's come to the Space Coast. Oh, how many times do you think he's come? 20, 25 wow. times? Probably about 20 reunions over the years. Yeah, maybe not quite 20, but he's been here yeah. quite a few times. Yeah, and uh, Jim Lovell didn't want to come. Of course, he's 92. Well, Jim wanted to come. He was just... COVID conscious, yeah. he's getting old. He's, yeah. His his last uh, event was the dedication of the Apollo 13 monument in uh, at Houston. In Houston, yeah. They dedicated the Apollo 13 monument in Houston. He was there for that. Uh, but anyway, so we glad everybody's watching Stay Curious. Sorry, I'm a little head cold here going on there, and I don't get those much, but it does affect your memory here. So, um Come with us tomorrow. Thank you, Marty, for all you do. Thank you, Jessica. Glad we could show uh, her and her husband at the table there. They do a lot of stuff for us, our whole museum here. And she's got another job now, IT, and for a school. So, uh, Marty, we'll do this again tomorrow. We're going to have start our kickoff, our shuttles of February. We've got 11 wonderful missions. Three of them launched on February 3rd. Try not to be late. And we'll try not to be late, Marty said. But if we are late, st- please hang with us because we know that you want to all uh, enjoy our broadcast and stay curious. So can't wait to see you all tomorrow and do it again. And until then, I'm Mark Marquette, bridging the space between us.